Hello detectives, Robin Stevens here with a festive December video for you celebrating the end of what has been one of the weirdest and saddest and most isolated years certainly of my life and probably of quite a few of your lives as well. But whatever has happened to you this year, here we are at the end of it. I have my lovely Robin jumper. I have my tiny little Christmas tree behind me and I am going to give you a rundown of some of my favourite books this year. Books that I think you might want to add to your Christmas list or give to each other for whatever festival you might be celebrating this month. So this is going to be a whistle stop tour because I have a lot more books than I normally do to get through. So here we go. The first category I'm going to be taking you through is my very favourite detective stories from this year. And the first book that I have chosen is a book for seven plus readers and it is Anisha Accidental Detective by Serena Patel. Now this is the beginning of a series, there's a second one out already. It is very funny, it's very clever. It is the story of Anisha, a girl whose aunt's wedding is rudely interrupted when the groom is kidnapped and Anisha and her best friend have to work out who on earth has done it and get the wedding back on track. As I say, it's one of my favourite detective debuts this year. You will be roaring. It is such a clever story. Anisha Accidental Detective for 7 Plus. The next book I've chosen is also for 7 Plus, and it is Mickey and the Animal Spies by Anne Miller. Uh, this is a story for anybody who is a budding spy themselves. It's full of codes to crack and it's also got lots of lovely animal characters. Uh, Mickey is the only human character and all her fellow spies are animals. It is hilarious, it's very clever uh, and again this is the beginning of a series. The next one is out next spring. The next book I've chosen is for readers 8, 9 plus and it is actually two books. It's a series, it's the Agent Ziba series. This is the first one, uh, this is the second. They are by Annabelle Sammy and Agent Ziba, uh, the character there, goes on detective quests with her little brother and her best friend. These are super fun, readable, engaging books with very clever mysteries in them. Next we have for the same age group The Cure for a Crime by Rupa Faruqi. It is the first in a series uh, about the double detectives, twin girl detectives, and it is sort of a medical mystery. They have to solve the mystery of what is happening to their mother and their teachers. They're all getting very sleepy suddenly and they think it might be something to do with their mother's creepy new boyfriend. And next for readers of 9, 10 plus, the second in Charlotte Jackson's High Rise mystery series, Mic Drop. Uh, this is a fantastic series starring two girl detectives who are sisters again, Nick and Norva. And in this book, they are solving the mysterious death on the estate where they live of an up and coming singer. It is excellent, very, very twisty and perfect for anybody who loves my books. Next, we are moving up to YA and I would say this book is for 13 plus and it is Karen McManus's One of Us is Next. This is a sequel to her book One of Us is Lying from a few years ago. Do read that first if you haven't, uh, but this is an excellent sequel and she actually has a totally new book out called Cousins, uh, which I will definitely be reading. I am a huge fan of her books. They read a bit like teen movies crossed with murder mysteries and they are excellent. So this is perfect for anybody who's 12, 13 plus who might be feeling a little bit too old for my books now. And I have another sequel, which is Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson, the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. These are my very favourite YA murder mysteries at the moment. They're for slightly older readers than Karen McManus, I would say. These are sort of for 15 plus, um, but they are absolutely fantastic. They are, this one you can see as a podcast, murder mystery in book form. Uh, I absolutely love this series. And if you are a murder mystery fan and you love YA, uh, you will eat this up. It is brilliant. Next, we are moving up to adult fiction. And first, I have After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. Louise is a fantastic author, and this is her very first murder mystery slash thriller, a bit more of a thriller than a murder mystery, really. It's set on a remote Irish island, and again, it has a podcast connection. It's extremely creepy. It's beautifully written, and I really enjoyed it. This, I would say, is for anyone sort of 17, 18 plus. It's properly an adult novel. And 
finally, in this category, we have the book that everybody's been talking about, Richard Osman's The Thursday Murder Club. It's extremely charming. It's very funny. It's about a group of people in a retirement home who decide to solve a series of murders in and around their retirement home. This is definitely not for children. Do not read it if you are sort of eight plus and you like my books. This is again uh, 16, 17 plus a proper adult novel but if you are an adult and you do enjoy crime fiction this is very cozy and charming and satisfying so I would definitely recommend this one. And the next category I'm going to be recommending you books about is Christmas because I personally am really enjoying reading festive books and watching festive TV shows and films and I suspect you may be the same. So the first book that I have chosen is one that you can start enjoying from about the age of sort of three or four with guided help from older readers and it is Alex T. Smith's How Winston Delivered Christmas. And this is a book about a mouse called Winston and it is sort of an advent calendar in book form. Every single day you get a different craft idea that you can do to help work along with Winston and move the story forward. It's extremely clever and I think that if you are struggling for something to do with young readers, with young kids, this is absolutely perfect for you. I have definitely sent this uh, to my young family members. Moving a little bit up in terms of age range, the next book I have for you is Tinsel by Shabale Pounder. Now this is a book for sort of seven plus readers, but I think you could have it read to you if you were five or six. And it's about the true origins of Christmas because Christmas was not really started by a man called Santa Claus. Christmas was started by a girl, a girl and her best friend. And so this is the true story of how Christmas and Christmas traditions really started. It's very funny, it's very charming, like all of Shabale's books and I think that you will get a lot out of it. I laughed a lot while I read it and then I cried at the end. Next is the book that I am currently reading as I'm filming this video for you and it is The Midnight Guardians by Ross Montgomery. This book is for nine, ten plus readers and it is set during the Blitz during World War II so of course it is perfect for me as I am researching uh, the first book in my Ministry of Unladylike Activity series which will take place at almost exactly the same part of history. Uh, but unlike my books this book is a fantasy story. It's about a boy called Cole whose three imaginary friends come to life to take him on a dangerous quest to save his sister from a bombing raid. I am really enjoying it. It's beautifully written. It's very evocative, very exciting and very fantastical. So perfect festive reading, I think. Now we are moving straight up to adult books with a romantic comedy, Someday at Christmas from Lizzie Byron, which is the pen name of a YA author who I really love, Tanya Byrne. Uh, this story is set in a department store right for Christmas and it stars a woman called Shell and it's going to be my next read when I finished Midnight Guardians. I love Tanya Byrne's books. I am so excited about her very first festive romance novel and I think this is going to get me even more into the spirit of the season which I think this year we all really need. So those are my book recommendations for you and of course if you want more, if you have already read all of those books somehow, go on to my Goodreads account which is at Red Breasted Bird and you can find out more about what I have been reading and I only put up books that I have really enjoyed on there so anything that I've got up there I basically recommend to you. You can also look through my previous YouTube videos and I have made a um, blog post for waterstones.com with some other favourite children's books from 2020. So there are lots of ways for you to find really good recommendations from me to fill up Christmas stockings or to give each other or to just read yourself if you want a really good book. So that's all from me this year, which is kind of incredible. I can't believe that we are at December. Part of me still thinks that it is March this year. But of course, we have done almost a full year. I have written a full book. I wrote the book of short stories Once Upon a Crime, which I am just tidying up now. I'm doing final touches on it and it's going to be published in August next year. You can already pre-order that. Uh, you can pre-order it from 
any bookstore, any online retailer. I'd recommend if you can pre-order directly from your local independent bookstore. Independent bookstores really need the support right now, as do all retailers. Um, a independent bookstore called Roundtable Books has an edition of the book that is both signed and personalized. I will sign it to you or to whoever you want and I will also write a little dedication message in there. So if you would like a very special copy of Once Upon a Crime, go on to the Roundtable Books website. Uh, they're also selling signed copies of all of my backlist, all of the books that I've published. So if you would like to get your hands on a copy of my book signed and personalized to you, go onto the Roundtable Books website and look for the special editions. Uh, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to send out books to you if you're not on the UK um, and get there before Christmas. Uh, you have a few days left if you are in the UK, but if you're watching this after Christmas, you can still order those books and I will send them to you and they'll get to you as soon as possible. I am literally filling them all, all the requests myself. Behind me, behind this chair I'm sitting on, you can't see, but there are about 100 copies of various of my books that I am preparing to send out to people. And it's been a really fun thing knowing that I can help make people's Decembers a little bit brighter. I'll be back next year. I'll be back in January with more information about Once Upon a Crime. I will also be back with more prompts. I have been doing, used to be weekly prompts, and now it is monthly prompts on my website, robin-stevens.co.uk. The final December prompt is up now, and I will be carrying that on in 2021. But if you want some writing ideas, if you have a bit more time over the holidays and you want to do some writing, go and have a look at the Monday writing prompts tag on my website and you'll see all 25 of the writing prompts I have already given you. So there should be lots and lots to get on with. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, whatever holiday you celebrate, whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or another holiday, I hope you have the most wonderful and restful break, wonderful and restful end of the year. Take care of yourself this year. It really has been very hard and you should be incredibly proud uh, to have gotten through it and to be where you are now. Even if you feel like this year nothing's really happened, you have still grown, you have still changed, you've learnt new things, you have become a more fantastic version of yourself than you were before, if that is possible. So have a wonderful end of the year. Take care of yourself, take care of your family and your loved ones. And I will be back soon. Goodbye.